187 at 5810 Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. Shut down, Roy. What's with that getup of yours anyway? I should start introducing us as Detective Earl, and this is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. Your interest in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Like it or not, we're a dysfunctional couple now. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> Got in the middle of that joke, just went down the wrong way. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Nick, as always, in Comet Touch Ninja, and we're once again back playing some LA Noir. This is going to be a replay of the first half of the Naked City I DLC mission. I got some feedback that the first episode was very, how you say, poopy <laughs> in terms of its video quality. The video was very laggy, which I fully admit it was, so we're gonna replay it. Um, if you guys watched my Elgato HD60 review, I'll tell, I told you guys that I don't you can drive. recommend using their in-house software. And that was actually the very last session that I used the in-house software. It just happened to be bad, so all the other videos after this. Seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for, so what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of L.A. forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages... The odds for and against lightning striking. Second floor, apartment six, in the back. Thanks. Pick this up. Even though I don't think it actually counts as a clue, but we're gonna pick it up anyways. Mal will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. The autopsy will confirm it one way or another. You're supposed to technically pick that out on the way after inspecting everything. Got some old friends. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? Or can we get on with it? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub. Rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. Maldar. I just fly by all this as quickly as possible. All the English yeah. smoking jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. Yeah, I thought that it was pretty much essential to replay it because this series is gonna be on YouTube forever and you can't have that one bad video. Looks like barbiturates. Damn barbiturates, though. Barbiturates. What else is rattling around in this thing? We should speak to a doctor. Prescribing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. 
Way she liked it, Phelps. Way she liked it. Hey. Phelps? Val, we've had a look around. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I took a look? Be my guest. Take a closer look at her head and neck. Her neck is bruised pretty badly. Bruising on the forearms, and these look like bite marks. Very good. Could you ever see a burger that would take a chomp out of you? Very unusual ring. I could be wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine, and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down, and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. It spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the serrets. It would make my theory. And morphine would have been very quick, and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay. So find two guys who recently bought serrets and weren't junkies, and you might be onto something. Okay, we gotta investigate this mantle. Something else. It's kind of weird to have gigantic pictures of yourself I... around your own house. Miss Julie, what? Just was... by yourself. This is all top like end of town stuff. Maybe she was having gives us somewhere to look, boys, huh? Maybe I she guess got her heart broken. Model, but even still, couldn't take it anymore. The vanity is strong. So she ran herself a bath, and down girl. some hills, and then she just the clothes certainly aren't from the Sears off. catalog. I don't know, Miss. Don't you be dissing Julie, the Sears catalog. Had so much fire. Would have been a modeling so assignment. Drive. Speaking sorry, of going under, man, Sears clear. just closed this year, 2017. They're there. We've had a good run. Well, they all okay. stores closed down in Canada. I don't know. It's place to start. I don't know if, if Sears is still rocking in the United States or not. Interview time. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson. I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I, who else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. Alrighty. Victim state of mind. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. Then why the sleeping pills? What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox. The things she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always... New clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star. A princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. Lie. Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. You can't prove that. Unless you wear a men's smoking jacket. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. But that's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. 
What was it like working for Miss Randall? Perfectly fine, officer. Doubt. Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement and then you can go home. I think our work is done here. Stefan Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? Barking orders. You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm with Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. Okay. Take a prowl car. Screw you, Roy. Can you drive to this one? Fine. Where are we headed? Dress store first. You gonna complain about this car? Yeah, I guess not. Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast you barely had time to learn their names. Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch. Well, hello. What can I help you with today? LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Truth. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy and neither was I. Did she have any close friends here? Actually, yes. Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, a <laughs> wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? <laughs> she does not want to give it up. That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. It's actually true. Henry is your beau. Tell us about it. Yes, he is. 
Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? Truth. She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiancé to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, oh no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Was being the key word. You know the way. You can drive. Do we know where we're going? Nice move, not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking the big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. To the doctor again. <laughs> Russian here. I swear, if we locked up every doctor in this town, Vice would be able to work half days. Stoneman, Office 505. Yes, sir, your name? This lady is like LAPD. We'd everyone. like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Your investigation is much more important than my sciatic. Dr. Stoneman, we are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. How well did you know Ms. Randall? Barely at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Lie. Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? Your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but... No. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. Doubt. Benzedrine is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her. But she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. No. You need to use your phone. Operator, give me R&I. 
putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Any messages? Yes, Detective. The coroner's been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. Okay, to the doctor's office we go. Out of the old boy is lying. About what? I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of a young patient. Drive me, Roy Oral. You son of a bitch. Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician-patient privilege card when they got something to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private. Until it gets in the way of police work. And it's only private when it suits them. A couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. I have some information for you. You're the only person enjoying this, Mal. Get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two by four. So what? Good riddance. I found two surrettes in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Matt. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Matt. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Matt. We'll check it out. I found something else. The harmonica. Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. And thanks for the lead. Sure, Mal. Thanks for the lead. This guy's such a dick. Uh... What room's he in? Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. How well did you know Julia Randall? Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally modeled for me. Doubt. He's asking whether you banged her in a chuck-on-the-shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. 
Yes. We had relations. Miss Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Could have been. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. Lie. Henry, I don't like when people lie to me. She was seeing a man named Henderson. You know who I'm talking about. Easy on, detective. I may have heard of Henderson, but I don't know his full name. I think he's from New York or someplace back east. San Francisco, bitch. That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. Okay, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. She thought she could get something from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. Ever heard of a Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? Is, is he an entertainer or something? Doubt. So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julia Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. Heather told us that you were in fashion. That's right. I'm telling you, it'll never stick and you'll get roasted. You're some kind of traveling salesman? Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. Fighting six. You were in the 6th Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. That will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have them get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. He's in that car at the lights. He was squirming like a worm in there. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. He just happened to choose Cole's old squad, the sixth squadron. <laughs> captain, eh? Or did he captain the mine? Jesus! I'd have expected a cad like Arnett to be a better liar. Can you quit driving like a jackass already? Stay within the law. Oh, the sirens for science. See what happens. We already know what happens. Where are you taking us, Henry?
that idiot never stepped foot in Okinawa. Probably a draft dodger. Run away! Shit. Pull over. This shoulder in a second. I think we're here. Look at his face. He needs money and fast. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him and see how he intends to spend the money. Move in. Can't risk losing the trail. Puff it, Phelps. I'll bring the car around when I'm done here. Gonna stay on this side of the road this time. Cause he's gonna cross eventually. Trail this fool. I like how this is a vice case, but had very little to do with the actual morphine. It was more of a love story. I see you, bitch. Yeah, you crossed that road. You dirty girl, you. Alright, come on, man. Getting bored here. This is why I always hate trying to recover footage or doing post commentary. You don't get that raw emotion of playing it for the first time or the first time in a long time. You just lose out on the moment, you know? And that moment's so special. Oh, for a second there, I thought that was him. That's right, Mexico City. One way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that okay? It's going to have to be. LAPD, the man who just came in here, he bought a ticket? Yes, sir, to Mexico City, tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. What have you got? He bought a ticket from Mexico City tomorrow night. That's good, but this is better. My God, it's Fabergé. Should have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least 10 large for a cigarette case. Arnett only got 600 clams. Ladies cigarette case. Okay, let's make this phone call and then that'll be it for this episode. Caught up to the second half of it. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps badge twelve forty seven. Are there any messages for me? 
Yes, Detective. Detective Spakowski and Galloway request you return to the Hollywood Station. They have information in the Julia Randall case. Any luck with the arrest record check on Jimmy LeBlanc? Yes, Detective. Jimmy LeBlanc's last arresting officer was Patrolman Fred Wallace. He's posted the Hollywood 9th Beat Sunset Boulevard between Gordon and Wilcox. Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this episode. Once again, sorry for the screw up with the laggy video. I did solve all my issues with the capture card. That was literally the last instance of it screwing up, which is probably why the video is so choppy. So, hope you guys enjoyed. We will continue on the series. If you enjoyed, as always, drop the video a quick thumbs up, and we'll see you guys next time. As always, have a nice day.